cosmic countdown continuing to go smoothly. The Skylab itself orbiting some 780 nautical miles northeast of KSC at this time. T minus 17 seconds and counting. T minus 15. At T minus 3.1 seconds, we'll expect the engine sequence to start on the vehicle. T minus 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Engine sequence start. 2, 1, 0. We have launch commit and we have liftoff. The clock is running and Skylab has cleared the tower. Houston is now controlling. The thrust is going all engine. The airlock, as you can see, is a rather... Finally, White's demonstrated some of the alarm systems which warn of fire and other dangers aboard the spacecraft. Our rapid delta P, which means that we're losing atmosphere from the cluster somewhere, sounds like this. understand the f-stops wide open now it is a mixture of the old veteran with the younger companion the veteran young has walked the surface of the moon in fact that's where he was when nasa got word that congress had approved money for development of the space shuttle back in 1973 young was named chief of the astronaut office at the johnson space center in 1975 and assigned commander of the shuttle in 1978 for the past three years, he and Crippen have trained for the upcoming flight. They would joke they've been overtrained, but the preparation continues until liftoff. Texas-born Crippen makes up in charisma what John Young has in experience. While he could probably conquer Hollywood, Crippen instead became a NASA astronaut in 1969, serving as backup for three Skylab missions. He will serve as pilot for the maiden shuttle voyage. What he and Young have repeatedly said they want the shuttle to accomplish is to make space travel passe. They hope the shuttle will become so economical that it can be used regularly for space construction, satellite placement and repair, and scientific experimentation. We realized back in the late 60s when we were in the Apollo program that to continue with the achievements that we would like to achieve and to utilize space like we would like to do, that we had to find a more economical way to do it. Consequently, the advent of the space transportation system or the space shuttle. And that is its primary goal, and that is the main thing that it's going to do for us. But while the world waits for the launch of the space shuttle Columbia, Young and Crippen realize their flight is merely a test to see if design and production of a reusable spacecraft has been successful. While this is Young's fifth space flight, it is Crippen's first. But an even more sobering fact is that the orbiter Columbia, unlike any other U.S. spacecraft before it, will be launched without ever having undergone unmanned test flights in space. Does that put butterflies in the stomach of an astronaut? As John Young says, if you're not nervous, you don't understand what's happening. At the Kennedy Space Center, Gary Whitaker for ABC News. T minus 15, 14, 13, T minus 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. America's first space shuttle. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. Roger. 
Columbia, Houston, your go throttle up. Yeah, go throttle up. Roger, Columbia on the nice ride. You're lofting a little bit, so it'll probably be slightly high at staging. One minute, 45 seconds coming up on go, no, go. Columbia, you're in negative seat. Uh, that call up says uh, that uh, Columbia has the altitude is too high for ejection seat use. Mark. Columbia, you're going for SRB step. Two minutes, four seconds, standing by for SRB step confirmation. <laughs> Roger on the step, Columbia. Mark, uh, two minutes, 20 seconds. Confirm solid rocket booster set. Mark, uh, two minutes, 30 seconds. On, gui on board guidance is converging his program. Columbia is now steering for its precise window in space for main engine cutoff. Mark, two minutes, 40 seconds. Columbia now 39 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 42 nautical miles downrange. Mark, uh, two minutes, uh, 50 seconds. Columbia, yeah. Columbia, you're looking a little hot. All your calls will be a little early. Okay. Columbia now has two engine rotor yeah, capability. Okay, we've got a good picture, Griff. John, sir, we appreciate those comments. We're going to switch to the back now, and uh, Crip is going to tell you how things went in the back of the ship. And Crip, for info, your mother and Jenny and the girls are all in the viewing room watching. All my great. Okay, we're switching over to uh, to the aft camera here. Now we're showing the aft deck. Uh, how's that picture look to you? Coming in real good. Okay, Hank. Yeah, I'd like to echo John's words, as I usually do. I guess uh, being the so-called rookie on this flight, I had a, a thrill from from the moment of liftoff all the way up to what we're doing now. It has really been super. The spacecraft has worked as advertised all the way along. A uh, few little minor new problems, but uh, nothing of significance. I guess the major one you guys are working on down there is uh, dealing with some of our instrumentation. But uh, I think we've got something that's really going to mean something to the country and the world. This vehicle is uh, performing like a champ, like all of us that have worked so long on them knew, knew that you would. I guess in uh, acknowledging people that uh, have done a lot for the program, I think it's only right that we mention a couple of guys that gave their lives a, a few weeks ago in our countdown demonstration test, John Bjornstad and Forrest Cole. They, uh, they believed in the space program. It meant a lot to them. I'm sure they'd be thrilled to see where, uh, where we have the vehicle now. We uh, our hat is off to those guys. But it's been fun. We think the rest of the mission is... Looking forward to working with you guys and looking forward to uh, landing in Edwards a couple days from now. And unless you got some questions, Hank, I guess that does it. 
That was a good time, and I think you must have practiced. We're just about to lose your ghost song. Just accident. of wisdom now on that whole tile situation. Why did the tiles fall off as best you can figure? How critical might it be? Are there any other tiles that might be missing? And if so, how will you know? Well, that's a lot of questions. Let me, uh, first off, uh, the tiles that we have seen observed uh, via the TV cameras in the field bay are located on the Ohms pods uh, where we believe there are nine tiles missing on the starboard pod. Uh, there is still a debate going on how many might be missing on the uh, port pod uh, somewhere between four and six and it we think that a couple of those the reason there is a discrepancy there is there was observed pre-mission some discoloration on some tiles there that we think may have turned a darker color and we just haven't reviewed the photographs well enough to make sure how many are missing there they are uh, the SIP the insulation that's underneath appears to be intact in the places the tiles are missing or there are chips missing off of, off of tiles. Uh, we have uh, already looked at a thermal assessment of predicted thermal performance coming back in and a way I think you could relate to this. Uh, we think we took a bigger thermal pulse going up in that area than we're going to take coming back. Uh, I, I really ought to, the tile folks, we brought, we brought a tile guy, Jim Smith, with us and, uh, and uh, probably you ought to address if you've got some specific questions to him. Now, one more question, Roy. You asked me if I knew where there were any other tiles that might be loose. The answer is no. Uh, and quite frankly, we're not worried about any other tiles being loose. Uh, the phenomenon that uh, took them off, uh, and this is pure supposition at this time. Gosh, you know, we're just now trying to regroup and understand what might have done it, but it's fairly obvious. It probably was some kind of shock wave and ascent that we didn't anticipate, and uh, that's about all I can say. It's uh, in the same area on both sides, away from the tail and up on the top of the, near the front and up on the top of the pod. Uh, Jim, you have any other comments on what might have taken them off? No. <laughs> the, there's no emission effects uh, because of the loss of these tiles, primarily because there's two inches of insulation on the inside of the Ohm's pod structure that protects all of the propellant systems within. So that, the that loss of a couple of tiles will make no difference. The, the question was, does the fact that, that some of them, when they sort of key together, does the fact that some are missing make others more vulnerable to coming sure. loose when you fire the engine? No. repeatedly, as you will during the rest of the mission. Not when you fire the engine, no, sir. <coughs> at this writing, is there anything, anything at all, that would lead you to say you might not go for a full duration mission? Nothing. Go all the way. Yes, sir. Yeah.